This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Howdy guys, it's Luke at Geek Gaming Scenics. Let's paint some minis messily. I'll catch you after this. Is messily even a word? Yeah. That'll do. <laughs> So guys, I'm putting this video together, one, because I want to paint a model up for my little one so she can copy it for an upcoming video, and two, I've got a character model for my Age of Sigmar army that I need to paint. Now, going back to when I was a commission painter, I used to have to knock models out fast, and I learned to paint messy, but how to save it to get the best effect, so you don't have to waste time putting multiple coats down to get a strong base coat. And it'll, I'll show you how painting messy can actually look nice in the end. So let's crack on. So let's talk sci-fi model first. Space Marines, I used to speed paint, God knows how many Space Marines back in the day when I was commissioned painting. Now we've got contrast paints, this really does improve the base coat because what you can do is just lob it on pretty thick and I don't worry if it is patchy. It's better if it's not, but it doesn't matter if it is patchy and sometimes the patchiness can add towards damage and, you know, sort of mucky looking armor or just extra texture. So just bath that on, or let it dry out totally. So guys, while that contrast paint's drying, let me tell you about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that I've been using for quite a while now and it's very, very helpful. Me and Josh have been using Jordi Vanderputz advanced video editing on Adobe Pro. What's good about Skillshare is the fact that you don't have to look through countless YouTube videos trying to find that little bit of information you want. You've got completely ad-free content to find the information that you want to improve your business. Now we use it for video editing and if you can see or point out any of the little editing tricks that we've done in this video, put in the comments below. But if you're not into video editing, if you're wanting to push your business in many different ways, Skillshare's got you covered with thousands of courses from art, business, food, whatever you can think of, there's people on there to teach you and learn the information that you need to get to where you want to quicker. If you want to check it out for yourself, the first thousand people using my link below get one month free. So check out all the links below guys and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It's helped me and I'm sure it will help you. Now, back to the video. So what you need to do once that's dry is you need to come in with a dry brush. This is just to lighten up the higher areas. And I like to use, especially over this pink color, I like to use a magenta that doesn't exist. Magenta does not exist, according to Vince. <laughs> so dry brush with a magenta first, get your higher areas all highlighted up. Then what I like to do then is just put a touch of ivory in it and just give that a final dry brush on the top edges and any sort of armors that are poking out where they'd be a little bit brighter. What you've got there is it covers all them sort of uneven mistakes with the contrast paint and it just sort of levels it out. So after you've got that dry brush and everything done, you wanna be doing your base coats like the white on the uh, pauldrons or whatever they're called. Now, if you overlap a little bit or you undershoot it a bit, don't worry too much. Just get a coat on there or two, if, especially with white. Get your gold on, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it is quite hard to paint them, especially with eyes like me, but I try and get them as neat as I can. Especially with things like leather uh, and your guns and metallics, if they're a little bit patchy, don't worry too much. We'll save it in a second. Now, back in the day when I used to speed paint armies for people, when it came to Space Marines, I used to use glazers. The reason I used glazers is it richened up the color, it got rid of that dustiness of the dry brush and everything else. Now, with the rebirth of uh, enamels and oil washers, this has changed a few things. I like to paint a bit grotty, a bit more realistic looking rather than bright, overly colored models. And using an enamel wash like the AK Interactive Streak and Grime, it just tones this all down and really dirties it up. Now bath it all over. Don't worry too much, it is quite worrying, but bath it all over. Then once that's dry, you need to come in there with a Q-tip or another brush or a sponge and just wipe off the higher areas. But what you'll notice is on the pauldrons uh, where you have been a little bit messy, 
uh, where the base coats on like the leathers and things are a little bit patchy the wash emphasizes that because it darkens up them areas and it's another tonal gradient because there was like a gray base coat with a slight zenith i like to start with any sort of inconsistencies in that base coat that you did originally it helps towards the final color because you've put this dirty filter over it and once you take that off that model looks mint for literally no time at all i think it took about 20 minutes to paint everything on that model and if you're doing armies of space marines this is the way that i do it and painting messy it helps with speed because you're not tidying up your mistakes you're just literally using the wash to fill in where you've made them little mistakes so with fantasy models it's a little bit easier with your sci-fi you've got sharp edges you've got things that need to be sort of clean but with fantasy models it's all flowing skin it's flowing cloaks it's hair you can be actually a lot more messier with fantasy models especially if you're going for that sort of darker fantasy more realistic look any recessed area like skin the deepest area of the model do them first just slap that paint on again don't worry too much if it's inconsistent especially over this gray uh, base coat the skin color it goes on pretty well as a pro curl anyway but there's are some areas that are a little bit thinner than others but that's just like a free highlight and low light keep it i know a lot of people will disagree with this but when you're speed painting it works trust me then on with like your golds and your oranges and same principle applies if you overlap anywhere if you sort of when you're doing like the wristbands and things like that if there's a bit of skin on it or if there's a bit of gold on the skin don't worry especially when it's on like a really small piece the wash is going to hide all this so don't be spending time hiding all them uh, mistakes you've done or fixing them mistakes you've done because we're going to hide them later now at this point the model looks horrendous but once we get that wash on again again we're going with the streak and grime it will sort of bring out all the definition in the model and it'll just sort of tidy any mistakes and everything you've done up again let it dry take it off as, as we did in the first one but the problem you've got with like the some of the fantasy models using a lot of colors that are very close to each other like as you saw orange on the hair we've got gold on the armor which is very close to orange we've got the skin tone which is similar colors again and when you put a brown filter over all that it just completely desaturates it and i'm okay with that because i kind of like that look but there's certain things i like to pick out all you've got to do is once that's dry and you've you've brought up them highlights nice just by removing more of the wash just go in there with the same color dry brush that you did earlier and just pick out the hair do a little bit on the gold and if you want go in there and add a bit of silver uh, just to bring out some of the edges and it literally takes minutes again this model i painted a lot quicker than the space moon i don't exactly know how much quicker but it was painted a lot quicker and it was a lot easier to paint and the the overall outcome of that model at the end i think is a lot nicer and better and the slayers from games workshop they're not particularly the sharpest sculpts either but you can paint them like this and they do look pretty damn good for a very quick speed paint job and especially when you're running a lot of naked gingermen on the table you need to get them painted pretty quickly and this is why i like painting messy because it can be fixed with a wash and then while we're talking about speed let's talk about basing you know gig gaming scenics is my company and we make basing materials for the models for these we're just using the base ready uh, new zealand on the space marine and all you've got to do is chuck the fast dry basing glue on there dip it in the pot win it around and it's done okay so that just means that if you've got 60 of these to do it'll take you literally about a minute a model if that and same with the slayer but i'm going for the volcanic island base ready with this one because it's a nice sort of dark volcanic rock with multiple different grains in there rather than having to paint the base black and mess around with sands and stuff just dip it in and it's done and as you can see a messy paint job and a quick base models can look pretty good with a messy paint job so guys i don't like doing miniature painting videos as such but i get a lot of people saying that they like them because my painting jobs seem very achievable 
And newbies kind of like it because they're getting the stuff done quickly and effective. For me, this is how I've always painted. I do enjoy doing blending and things like that, but I'd rather have an army finished than spend that time doing one or two models. I'd rather get an army done and we can always go back and improve the skin with a few highlights and stuff later. And if you're new to the hobby, you've got no models done, get them done, go back later. And you can do a better job and clean things up when you go to make them look nicer in the end. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to support us, don't forget Geek Gaming Scenics is all worldwide now and you can get it from shops all over the world. Find a supplier near you, you helping them helps me. If you want to support us a bit more directly, we do have a new launch Patreon, which we're going to be adding things to. Uh, and you get your names called out like you can see now. And we also are going to be starting doing a podcast for my patrons every month. And we're going to be starting that at the end of next month. So guys, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making it possible. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next video. Love, love, love. Thank you.